Good afternoon. My name is James Tanner. I'm a senior software engineer with Ansible uh, by Red Hat, recently acquired by Red Hat. Uh, we were an independent company up until about a year ago uh, when Red Hat acquired us. Uh, you can reach me at jtannerredhat.com or look at my projects on github.com slash jctanner. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about VMware management with Ansible. Uh, some people use Ansible, uh, some people don't. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, though, that Ansible also has a powerful uh, set of modules to interact with VMware. Uh, so let me start, though, with, by describing what Ansible is. Ansible is an automation for everyone uh, language. Uh, we intend or attempt to allow you to describe your entire infrastructure from the ground up in code. Uh, in this case, the code is YAML. Uh, YAML is a human-readable language that we find that most people can use and read and, in most often cases, becomes something that can actually describe or document your infrastructure. Um, so we strive to also be the simplest language to use. So unlike other configuration languages, we try not to be a developer-based thing. You don't write the right code for us. You just simply express your state in YAML. Uh, you don't have to write Ruby or Python. You just simply uh, write human-readable language such as uh, user colon, name equals Joe, state equals present. And that's the entirety of what you need to learn to write. Um, we also have an enterprise uh, offering called uh, Ansible Tower. This sits on top of Ansible, which is primarily a command line. Uh, Tower gives you the ability to have a REST API, a central place to run uh, Ansible, um, user logging, uh, who ran a playbook, when they ran it, what the results were. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, let you uh, log in via LDAP or Active Directory. It becomes your central hub for Ansible, whereas most people running Ansible from the command line can run it from their laptops. Uh, there's no central coordination. You're not sure who did what when. Uh, Tower gives you that enterprise endpoint to do all that centrally. So back to the VMware modules themselves. Uh, Ansible has the concept of modules. These modules allow you to set specific state. One simple example might be something like, say, if I don't have a guest by this name, clone it. If I do have a guest by this name, do nothing. Uh, in the end, the result would be change equals zero, or no changes at all. Uh, you're really trying to assert what the end state is, not how to get there, but what you want it to look like. Um, we have uh, many different modules of VMware. Uh, VMware guests, or vSphere guests, the one I just referenced. We have other ones also that can add resource groups, clusters, hosts. Uh, you can take an empty vCenter and, from starting with nothing, populate it with your entire infrastructure, such as the data centers, the hosts, and all that. Add templates, add VMs, clone VMs, delete VMs, turn them on, add content to those VMs. Uh, you're not really limited at all with Ansible. Um, we can actually do pretty much anything you want, and if there's a gap that you're missing, we have a simple language in which you can write a new module to fill that gap. Uh, most of our VMware modules are, are based on PyVMommy, which is a Python library provided by VMware and supported by them. Uh, so we're only limited by the VM, our vCenter API as far as what we can do against a vCenter. We also have uh, vCloud and vCloud Air modules uh, to interact with those services as well, and if those are what you're using. If you would like to see the rest of the modules we have that can do things like simply manage files, manage Docker containers, create Docker hosts, uh, uh, create, cloud, create cloud instances, the whole gamut of things. Uh, there are roughly around 620 modules at this point, um, and they're growing. We still have 200 in the queue to review and merge, so we'll be hitting 1,000 here in the next year or so. Um, but those are all listed on uh, docs.ansible.com uh, slash ansible slash list of all modules. Um, so for this talk, I actually wanted to get into the nitty gritty of actually showing you how Ansible operates and how you can use it from Tower. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, a very simple use case of taking a single guest by a name prefix, such as like test VM underscore zero zero. And scaling that out to two or three VMs, test VM underscore zero zero one, zero zero two. Kind of adopting an idea that we have in EC2 where we can say we will have an exact count of instances uh, by this tag group. So let's say that we have a tag group of web and we want to have 10 of those exactly, but we only have eight, or maybe we have 15. Scale up or scale down to get to that exact count. So the basic process we're going to start with is in vCenter, we're going to have a single VM. We're going to run a job template in Tower, which is an abstraction around an Ansible playbook. And I'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, we're going to run the job template. It's going to, uh, then we're going to switch over to the vCenter console, and we're going to see that actual clone task occur. Uh, and then we're going to uh, deploy some uh, content to that new instance. Uh, and that will be the provisioning step. So in the, in the, uh, 
for time sensitivity, I'm going to have static uh, screenshots of this, but I also had this on a YouTube video so you can watch the whole thing live. Uh, so I'm just going to go through some screenshots, but if you really want to see this actually happening in real time, there's a video on YouTube that I will have the, at the end of this uh, slide deck. Uh, so what you're looking here on the screen is an example playbook for Ansible. Ansible Playbook is a, like I said before, a YAML-based file, which you can have a human-readable format of what you want as your final state. In this case, the first line we see is host. Uh, this is your local host in this case, because we're going to be running this from our local machine and connecting to vCenter to do the operation. So uh, the next important step is the task section. So starting at line 9, looking down at line 11, uh, you see that we're calling VMware Guests. Uh, this is a new module that I wrote just for VMworld that I will put, be pushing upstream soon. Uh, and this gives us the concept of saying, I don't want to just clone a single VM. I don't want to say this template should become this VM. What I want to do is say this template should have exactly this many instances running from it. So in this case, I, I have a default of one. I can pass in any arbitrary number. Uh, so if you see on line 17, we're passing a count. So I could put in 20, 30, 100. 600. And what's going to happen in the back end is that module is going to call vCenter API and clone that template that many times based on the number you want. Or if there's more than you already wanted, it will delete the last few instances or we could apply a policy to go maybe delete the first ones. Uh, any which way you want to go there. And the reason I'm showing this as a custom module because I wanted to also demonstrate some uh, custom module development, how easy it can be. I actually wrote this module by copying an existing uh, module, changing about 10 lines, and then I was done. Uh, so. I mentioned before about Tower Job Templates. Uh, what I've done is that playbook we just looked at previously, I've, I've added that to Ansible Tower, the, our, again, our commercial offering. And what I've done is I've kind of made an on-demand self-service portal. So as an operator, I may not want to learn Ansible. Uh, so I have a DevOps or sysadmin who creates the playbooks, adds that to Tower, and defines some simple inputs, such as uh, the guest name and the exact count. So in this case, I'm asked, what is the count? So as the user, I type in test VM for the name, exact count is two. And that should scale us from one to two VMs. Uh, so in Tower, when we're running these jobs, they're fetching their content or these playbooks from uh, an SCM. And in most cases, GitHub or Git or GitLab or SVN. Um, and so before we execute the playbook itself, what we really want to do is make sure we have the latest version. So what we'll ha Tower will do automatically is Git clone and Git update the playbook content we have from whatever our SCM source is. Uh, so that's what I'm showing here is the SCM update that occurs uh, as an interjected job before I, it runs the uh, job that I requested to run. So uh, again, because static screenshots and time sensitivity, this is a kind of example of what would happen in the UI. We started out with, uh, if you, as you see in the top left there, a single VM by the name uh, prefix testVM000. Uh, we triggered the job in Tower, which then triggers an Ansible uh, playbook run. Uh, we can see uh, that there's a task running for a clone VM, and we have a new VM at the bottom right showing up as test VM001. So creating new VMs is not always the stop or the stopping point for most people. We need to put content on it. Uh, this is the case where some people might call it bare metal. We have a machine with no agents. We have nothing on there other than SSH. Uh, and this is where Ansible actually excels at, because this machine has nothing on it other than SSH. We can actually get into it and manage the content of it. So what I'm showing here is in uh, another playbook uh, that's defining host as all instead of localhost, as we saw before. Uh, and what's going to happen when we run this in Tower is I've told Tower to look at a dynamic inventory, which is a script that will run against vCenter, get a list of all instances by their name and their attributes such as their UUIDs, and pass that along to Ansible uh, so that Ansible knows what it, the IP addresses are and the guest names. So what I can do is say, for all machines that I know of, run this playbook book against them and then apply these uh, module calls or tasks. Um, in this case, we're, I'm showing you how I'm installing a package or two, uh, showing some information about the machine, uh, and then uh, we're going to go from there. So again, that playbook was wired into Tower as a job template. And we can see here this provision instances job template. Uh, this is what when the operations person is ready to run the provisioning step. Or if you wanted to, you can just link the first playbook we saw with this one and have them in the same call. So spin up instances and in the same run, provision them. Uh, it's really up to you and how you want to do that. Maybe you want to segment that out by team. So someone creates the machines, another person uh, maybe provisions them. So that was pretty much the entirety of my demo. Based on time, uh, I mean, watching a VM clone in vCenter takes quite a bit of time, in most cases, unless you're using one of the instant clones or you have a faster disk. Uh, so I'm going to stop with there. But uh, like I said before, I have a full video of this demo you can watch on YouTube. Um, and you can watch it go from the 
uh, playbook run all the way down into the watching the clone task occur. Uh, and also, uh, I just wanted to mention that the, these playbooks and these modules that I've written, these are all on github.com slash jctanner slash vmworld dash demos. So if you want to look at how I did some custom module development, the playbooks themselves, they're all in there. I even have another playbook to say, I spun up a whole bunch of new instances, but maybe now I want to turn those into a Docker swarm. So take a, so sort of a legacy VM infrastructure and turn that into a new world uh, Docker infrastructure. Uh, just a simple another playbook call instead of having to do a whole lot of other management. Um, it's, it's quite simple with Ansible to get this stuff going. Uh, you can start very simple, uh, and you can make it as complex as you want, but in the end, it still stays a human-readable language in which most people can understand and use as even uh, product documentation. Uh, so that is the entirety of my talk. Uh, I, I appreciate your time, and uh, have a good one.